just um, my name is Federica Gazzelloni. Uh, I'm doing this last chapter, uh, which is screening many models for, for the book Tidy Modeling uh, using Tidy Models package. Uh, this, this chapter turns out very, to be very interesting. So um, um, we have uh, uh, many things to see. Um, I started showing you how uh, I've read the, the, the chapter, the resources I've used, uh, and then we just revisit a bit the, the parsing um, syntax to uh, conclude with uh, finalizing uh, with the model. Um, just uh, uh, something to uh, like put my hands uh, Forward is that uh, it takes many times to run for the screening of the models. So I have been able to, to run something a bit like um, in a simple uh, uh, way. Uh, so I'm, I'm going, but then it takes more time for it, quite, it takes an hour. Um, so I'm, I'm going to, to show you the things, share the screen, and then we start. Okay, this is my R. And uh, here is the book. Sorry. Okay. I have a few things over it. Okay. After this housekeeping things. Uh, so this is um, in this, this chapter. Uh, we learn how to set up a workflow set, how to include more than one workflow set inside a workflow map, um, how to um, screen uh, models using two model screening approach, grid and racing, and then finalizing the, everything uh, with the, um, finding the best model. Uh, basically, to uh, understand this chapter, which is very, uh, I love it, uh, very nice, it's great. There's lots to learn uh, because it's like wrapping everything um, and to conclude with the, the book, basically, for uh, the modeling part. And um, so I've used uh, uh, the book in itself, and then uh, some articles. I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll show you, uh, I'll share the link in the chat. Uh, and then I've used um, R for Data Science book, which has a nice uh, uh, chapter, which is, um, as a section, uh, many models. But this chapter here, model, um, gives you a nice uh, introduction about modeling and everything. Just if you want to uh, see um, how the, the models um, are uh, uh, before tidy modeling, basically. Because I've asked myself, Okay, I have a function which does most of the job, but what this function does. So if you um, have, uh, are interested, you, you should go through this chapter uh, because then you can really understand uh, the thing. I go back there um, and share the... The things in the chat. Okay. 
Okay, this is one. This is a nice article, for example, um, about building a model. Um, it, there is a, a nice set about uh, urchins, um, these this little animals, uh, quite few data, but it turns out to be very interesting. And there's the, the all, uh, um, like the, 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 the steps through uh, modeling. And you have everything here. I've, mm, go, I'll show you some interesting insight about this uh, article as well. And this is the, um, Uh, the chapter model uh, models in the R for Data Science book. Okay, so um, for for the next uh, session, if we have one, um, I like to to share some um, like applications of of this modeling to one of our. Um, uh, studies, favorite study. I have this chosen these two because I found it uh, through searches and everything. Uh, I think uh, these two are have been shared by one of our uh, in the um, uh, Slack. But I don't know if I uh, be able to do that. Um, I like to to share some applications um, with this. So in general, um, we have uh, different type of models. Why I'm, I'm doing this little recap? Uh, because uh, in this book, this uh, chapter uh, lists uh, all the models uh, that make, make, it makes a mixture of linear and nonlinear models in one workflow. So um, I've asked myself, uh, why don't we have a little introduction about modeling? Um, so models can be descriptive, inferential, or predictive models. And um, so descriptive models, this is like a sort of step-by-step. -step. So the first part, you have a model, you make some descriptive statistics, then you do some inferential thoughts and say maybe um, what are the p-values, the confidence intervals and everything. And then finally, you make a predictive models. In general, in general, the most used one is a linear regression model. And uh, this type of model, uh, it's very it usually falls within all three all these three steps. Then another interesting uh, classification is that the model can be supervised or unsupervised. So supervised models are those models that have, that have an outcome variable with a characteristic model, like linear regression, neural networks, to be simple. Uh, because uh, we have uh, a mode specification within the parsnip syntax, then we we'll see this. Uh, there are two types of modes, regression and classification. So we are talking about supervised modeling. While the unsupervised models are those made to understand the relationship within variables without explicit the relationship between predictors and an outcome. So basically it's like a part of a model, of a supervised model, like principal component analysis, clustering, etc. cetera. Uh, in, mm, so to summarize, data analysis process include exploratory analysis, feature engineering, model tuning and selection, and model evaluation. So when we do a model, usually uh, what we have some data, 
And then we look at this data, we tied this data, we set up this data ready for, um, for, uh, for modeling. Then we apply a formula, which is like sort of LM linear modeling. Uh, and inside we, we put a formula and, a, and our data. With tidy modeling, we use parsnip model objects, which is that formula, but it's split within like um, a model, an engine. So th this is this are, um, an engine. This is the name of the model. Um, then we have an engine, and then we have a mode. When once we have settled these three uh, steps here, we fit what we found to the same data, to new data and everything to see the prediction. I've made this uh, nice um, graph, which turns out to be very popular uh, uh, on Twitter. I'm very happy about this. This is an achievement for me. It's a, um, so as you see, uh, the, these are the name of the models, which goes inside here. This is the engine, which is this, uh, sorry, which is set the engine and goes inside here. And this is the mode, set the mode. As you can see the mode, we have just regression and classification mode. The only model, which is linear regression, is the only one which uh, involve just one mode regression is not a classification uh, model. So these are the this list is the list of the model that are used in the chapter. Okay, we are going to take these models divided into group linear models and non-linear models, and then we mix up them together in. Uh, one workflow. Uh, now I'm going to jump on uh, the another thing, which is this my um, uh, this is my uh, this is the um, the code uh, shared in the chapter. So I thought to do this way because I found that maybe it's a nice way to, to see it better. Okay, so we have, uh, um, this is the chapter and this is the code. Okay, we go through the chapter. So basically um, this chapter, uh, says um, um, concrete um, is the data, okay? Um, so we are going to model this data and see what are the strengths of this data. We create a workflow set, we tuning and evaluate the model, and then screening the models with racing the second, uh, um, the second approach, which one is, is grid and the other one is uh, racing. And then finally we finalize the, the model choosing the, the, with the best one. Um, so um, libraries are uh, this library here. And it, the chapter requires these other two libraries, baguette and rules for the, the function that we'll see later on. So the data are from model data package. It, it, um, it, the name of the data is concrete. So the first step uh, is that we uh, set up the, the data ready for our uh, for modeling and um, we use uh, in um, there are there are many uh, 
resources uh, available. So I suggest you, if you have uh, interested and you have time to, to go to this uh, um, resources because are, are very important. There are also two books uh, available for free for you to see uh, about learning statistics. So if you want to, um, I put in the chat for, for practice. So basically we, we see what's inside this data set as a first step. So we have uh, um, the library, Then we load the data and we see that uh, uh, it's better if I put the other. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I have an. Um, Okay, fantastic. Okay, so this is the this is the data, and you can see it here as well. This data uh, has some nice uh, information about concrete, uh, like uh, what, but what we are interested in is the compressive strength. Obviously, when you have some data, you think about what are the the what 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 I'm looking for, okay? So what I want to predict. So basically, the, I want in this uh, case uh, predict the, the strength uh, when the the cement is compressed. So what what is the strength? And uh, for um, for doing this, I need to set up the data. And first things I group by uh, by some um, variables, and then summarize this like with the mean of the compressive strength, which is like a prediction um, to select this. Uh, um, just for these uh, selected variables. Okay, so um, when I, I looked through the modeling procedures and everything, uh, one more things to add uh, is that uh, um, there are some um, uh, eh. there are some ways to do a model. Okay, we can do uh, with a formula, uh, we can do with a parsnip um, um, syntax, uh, and then we prep and we bake. But then um, we can do uh, in a more, um, um, let's say, um, step by step way. Okay, uh, and if you, we want to see more inside um, insights of the, the data, it would be important to split the data into train and test in a way that we have a part of the data that we use for testing our model. And then the, um, uh, a smaller part that we use for uh, using the model to predict the data, okay? So what I found interesting is that uh, um, we have uh, uh, the PASNIP syntax to be applied in our training data obtained by the split. When we split. And then we set up a recipe and we put the model and the recipe inside the workflow. And then we fit the workflow. Then we pull out the, the things from the workflow to, to find the things. So um, there are uh, some combinations, uh, different combinations. Okay, so in this case, we do um, split 
the, the data set in a train and test, uh, stratifying um, following the, the, the composition of the compressive strength variable. And this is because this is our predictor. So we are interested to see how our data is like uh, grouped um, a different level of compressive strength, that, which is the, the variable that we want to predict. So then we, we, we make a recip. And in this case, it, it's quite simple. Uh, we use just a st one step, step normalize or predictors. Then we start uh, deciding for uh, which are the models that we want to use. As I said, we have uh, this list of models. We use some of the, these models, which are uh, linear models for this recipe, the first recipe. And these models are um, multi, um, uh, now I don't remember the name, so, but anyway. Um, okay, um, what is it? Sorry about that, but uh, uh, so we have uh, this model, um, then the, super, uh, the support vector machine, uh, and then the support vector machine polynomial, then the nearest neighborhood. Um, so these are the four linear models that we use. Uh, and we use this in addition to classical general linear model, but we, we add that later, not now. Okay, so here in the book, they, um, they do, the two recipes are together. I have split it to, for me to have a, a, an, an idea of what is happening. Basically, the first recipe is aligned with linear models, which are these four used in the book. Then we do set the parameters with this function parameters. Uh, we do update uh, as said here. This is the whole list of the, uh, the models. Then it said it, this is uh, updated because it can have uh, the neural network, and that's what uh, the neural networks should have up to 27 hidden units in the layer. So this is why this option has been set. Okay, so these are the neural network parameters that we want to use as a key parameters inside our uh, global workflow. Um, uh, I'll go forward, then we go back if you have any uh, questions to see uh, maybe the, the function and what they say. So um, what we, do we do with this uh, um, first four models, linear models? We put them inside a workflow set. This is the function workflow set. Uh, the preprocessor part is the obviously the, the recipe. Um, you can have more than one recipe inside, but uh, this, this uh, exercise, this. Um, study has been done like this, with one recipe uh, inside uh, a workflow set and some different models. And this is our first workflow set. Then we have a second workflow set and we have a third 
workflow set. The, uh, the first workflow set, uh, so it's made of these four linear models. So we do normalize. I can run the things live because it's impossible. Um, but for example, if we want to see, once we have uh, made the first uh, um, uh, workflow set, if you wa we want to see one of the, the information that we have. Uh, uh, mm. Okay. So maybe we can have to run the recipe as well. Uh, is... Maybe maybe I didn't do that. Yes, I didn't do anything to be honest. Uh, because I'm used to markdown. Okay. Nice. So I have uh, uh, this is the uh, the first workflow set. I just jumped the recipe because. Uh, it's already half an hour. Uh, and then if we want to see inside one of these uh, uh, models we have uh, uh, se uh, selected, we can do like pull workflow as always with ID uh, of the model. And then we see that the model is the one uh, that we have uh, put inside. Then you can unnest the colon to see what is inside. Okay, so the next uh, step, and this is very nice, is to add, add our uh, first workflow set uh, an option, which is I, I had my parameters, my neural network parameters, and I give them an ID. So with option add, I had parameters for uh, a selected model. Okay. Um, and this is, uh, as you can see here, you have the parameters. Param inside the thing. Then for uh, the second workflow set, we have a second recipe. And we have different models. So we need these two libraries to load. And we have a second recipe. This is um, a, a polynomial recipe. And we use, uh, we have our recipe, uh, the, the recipe we have made before, but then we have added um, a step polynomial for all predictors and then step interact for, uh, among all, all, all predictors. This second uh, recipe will be used inside a second workflow set with non-linear models. The uh, non-linear models, this is later, uh, are here. Okay, and we have one, two, three, four, five, and six non-linear models that we add uh, that we put inside a second work, uh, workflow set. So we have uh, Mars, CART, um, Bug3, uh, Random Forest, Boost3, and Cubist rules. And these are all the, the models that we are using for our second Anit Random.
Mm. Okay. For the for the XG boost models, there's quite a lot of parameters to tune. I think there's like five or six of them with tune. It's it's impressive. Ah yes, inside inside. Yeah. Uh, that that's something interesting. That's why I've made all the things um, uh, because you in this in this chapter we just uh, use many many models. But when you choose a model, you need to, to, to make um, some assumptions. And for this XGBoost uh, um, model, there are some uh, options that you can add or, don't, or not add, modify, uh, and everything. Uh, this is always following your data and the object that you want to extrapolate from your data. So the, the prediction, the, the um, so your final objective. Um, in this case, there, there are uh, all the options available. Because uh, then we test which one is the model, uh, the favorite model among all these ones. And then when you have chosen the, 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 the best one, then you set in case you want best, uh, better result. Uh, in any case, uh, you can do like sort of a, uh, usual search with a question mark and boost three and see the explanation of the, uh, the thing. Uh, basically, the, the tune parameter uh, argument uh, of the tune function, it's very, very interesting. Uh, and um, th there is a chapter about this and um, basically it does lots of things because it tunes the, the, the data that you put inside the, uh, the model in a way that he set the, uh, the best uh, number of parameters, basically, that the model will use, okay? Then uh, what do we do? You, do you think I do just as the same I did it before for the first uh, workflow set? No, this time I add a workflow variables in addition, okay? So I have one more argument, which is, uh, I call it model uh, vars, the book called the, um, work for variables and this this um, model bars. What is it? It's just um, a, a section of the our of our workflow where I set outcome variables. This is our outcome. We want this. We want compressive strength as an outcome, and the predictors are everything. Okay. And this is a, there is a reason for this, because uh, um, when I do the workflow set, which is this is the second, just the same uh, before you can see it here. This is the first one. I've used the recipe, normalized recipe. Here I use model bars, which is not the, uh, which is not. Uh, our second recipe, because we have made a second recipe. Okay, but we add it later. Uh, and then as well as uh, in the first workflow set, uh, we add the models, all the models uh, listed above. Okay, run this. And then we have this second workflow set, just as the same as before. What happened here? Now we had features to our work, uh, workflow. So we had a third workflow set. We call it with features. And uh, because I've asked myself, these are the linear models. These are the non-linear models, but why do we don't use a, a linear, a, a general linear model, some like absolute, you know? And I saw that it was on the list. It was the first on the list. So then 
it's here. It's here that we, he used the uh, general linear model inside the features. So it's like we have some uh, linear models, non-linear models, and then we mix them up with a linear regression model. And uh, <laughs> um, um, the, in, so the K, the, um, this is the nearest neighbor um, model. Okay, so with these two. So we have this linear model, as always, with a PASNIP syntax. And we put it inside a uh, width feature, third workflow set, with our second receipt, the one with polynomials. Okay, so we have first the works, workflow is this one here. Second workflow, uh, which is this with model bars and not a recipe, a recipe. And then we have this one here, which is with features, and it's the third workflow set with the second recipe, a linear model, and a, a nearest neighborhood model, KNN. Now we bind them all together. So the first one is normalized. The, sec the second one is, is this one here with no pre-processing part because there is no receipt inside. And then with features, we do all workflows. Okay. Uh, we have it here as well. This is the list of all the uh, models that we have used, uh, put inside and everything. These are the, the mixtures. <laughs> okay, so then we go forward and say, now we should tune uh, and start with the first approach. The first approach we have to, as I said, we have two approaches, um, grid approach and racing approach. So the uh, grid approach is this. So we use control grid first. Okay, uh, this is something that I was already done in the previous chapters. Uh, it's a function uh, where basically we set up that our prediction and our workflow will stay inside and uh, we have these grids which are uh, have data that are uh, parallel over each other so they are like a sort of uh, uh, parallel models we um, so they are all different uh, they are mm, it, 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 they have no elements in common, basically. Okay, so they are all different. Mm -hmm. They are independent. I've, sorry, I think the parallel over refers to the computing. So when when the many models are fit, they can be fit parallel if you have like multiple cores in your processor. Yes, that, that's correct. That, that that's uh, exactly that. Exactly. Um, because this is an option that we then then we put inside uh, this grid control um, 
and, and this is uh, the option for, uh, as you said, maybe I didn't say, explain it clearly. As you said exactly, we use it to, um, when, when we do resampling, and we say that uh, uh, they have no element in common. And they are uh, exactly parallel within all the, the, the resampling. Uh, this is because um, I have uh, um, the, the resampling part, I did move it from the, in the chapter is just a, at the top of the page after splitting, after the split. I have moved this uh, down here because it's here that I need it. So um, then we take our, our data and we do cross validation. So we take the data, we uh, replicate uh, this data, the train part, um, and with repetition five times. Okay, cross validation, uh, it's a chapter in itself. Uh, we can uh, have uh, some questions later. Okay, then this is what the, the book does and it's here, okay? So, um, grid result and our all workflows, uh, so our global workflow with the three workflow sets, then will be mapped. Okay, workflow map is just like map. The, the function map, uh, or Lapli, Sapli, Laplace. Sap so basically map our workflow with some data, okay? Obviously we want this to be unique. So we set the seed. Then we use uh, resamples. What are the data that we want to map? This is of, of our uh, workflow set. Uh, the resample part is concrete false. And then there is the, the grid and the control uh, arguments inside the map available. Uh, and in the control, there is the grid control, which is the, this one here. So we use it. I don't know if it's clear. Does make sense? And then in some manner, in any manner? No. I go for hello. I think it, it's clear for me. I just ah, okay. <laughs> I wanted to add that uh, like it's it's always good to remind myself that this workflow map maps over the workflows and applies the tune grid function. So it, it's like with the regular map, you you always specify your collection and your function. And here you don't see the function because it's 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 the default. The tune grid is the default, but actually you map over the workflows and apply the tune grid. Yeah, so just I want exactly. exactly. to add that here. Yeah. Exactly. Um, because workflow map, um, what is it? Uh, exactly. Mm, workflow map. Uh, doesn't have a function here because uh, the uh, we have piped the information. Otherwise, we had to put the or, or a function or uh, in in our case this a um, workflow. Okay. So basically, 
um, it's like map. It has executed a function across uh, a data set in, in our condition, it's a workflow. And uh, here there is no example and, and nothing, but uh, if you attempt to apply it without a workflow, it doesn't work. Otherwise, you can, as, as you said, you need to add the function. Uh, as you said, there is a function uh, implicit inside because obviously it uh, the, the workflow map that does uh, something which is uh, um, like like maps a function uh, like ap uh, applying a function to some data. So this is these are the data from the book. And uh, I haven't used it because uh, it's been impossible to me for to run it. Okay, so um, I've looked at the other quotes, which are both very interesting and fantastic. I suggest you to to have a look at them, both the both the videos and the slides. Uh, so I've changed the grid. Three, I've reduced the number of parameters uh, to, to be searched, searched within the grid because otherwise it was impossible. And then I've had verbose to, true. Uh, not sure about uh, this. Uh, so maybe a little search, more search, it's, it's it needed. It took about 40 minutes to run this bit. Now I cannot run it. Um, so, but uh, I have uh, uh, reached the same, exactly the same results. Um, and then you see that uh, um, after you have run this, you, obtain this output okay and uh, i don't know if i can show you the output in any manner because i've made some screenshots of the thing okay as you see this uh, Uh, has worked probably three minutes, three minutes. Uh, it took 40 minutes to do uh, this way. Okay, then um, the output is this. Then what you need to do, once you have been able to run that, you need to uh, call again this function, just as the same as before. Okay, because we already done it, no? But we do again. If you see, exactly the same, because the parameters need to be updated. Once you have mapped the workflow, you need to run the grid again. And then do it again, okay? This time, uh, here as well as worked properly, I've just reduced the, the grid and add verbose true. Uh, and so finally, you what do what the, the result are uh, these things. And um, if the, uh, then you can run this command grid results, and, and you have, if you have all plus here, the, the models are good, okay? So they worked, they have, uh, uh, otherwise if you have an X, uh, some, some fail some, somehow. Okay, so this is, uh, now it's an hour, it's five to, 
uh, but basically this is the second approach. The second approach is uh, uh, racing. It took as well a lot long uh, time. Okay, so the things that you do is uh, taking um, no. Uh, okay, as you see, okay, we see the first result as this. Are, are, are this one here, and we have a plot. You know? We do uh, an auto plot, a grid result, with uh, selecting the, the metric that we, want to, that we want to see in the plot. And we see uh, the, the, these are the, the, the models, and we see the best one. Okay, so the, the one is cubist. Okay, and we see the, the here in the workflow rank. Okay. Then this is the, I don't know if I, this is not useful anymore. So, and then when, uh, um, Tuning, uh, we have nearly uh, ended. So now what we do, the second approach is racing. So basically we do control race as a function, just as the same as before when we do control grid, we do control race. Then we do apply this thing to a workflow map, just as the same as before. We see the result, check always the, the plus, if it's a plus or, or a X, and then an auto plot, and we see the result. Slightly uh, different, but he said mm, that with grid, he has uh, used 25,200 models. Here, just for uh, 4,000. So 16, 17% of the full set. Um, then uh, uh, the book matched the result with a plot. As you can see, uh, and then finally, uh, the best result, choosing the, um, selecting the metric uh, and everything with the usual function for workflow, but this time set result. Uh, finalize the split and the um, result are uh, this nice model. And the, the model that has been, uh, uh, so I predicted well, quite well, using this function, collect prediction. Okay, so I stop sharing. Sorry about that, but it took uh, quite a long time to uh say everything Hope, hopefully uh you have an idea of what is it let's see the chat um if you have any questions um i don't know or maybe want to share some experience personal experience it would be very useful Thanks for the presentation. It, it, it was a great, great overview, and we saw the the whole whole game, like how you start and then and, and how you and how you end up. So it it it, it was great. Uh, well, I I don't really have questions now. I was wondering that is it always necessary to like when you choose like which models to look at 
then they also tuned in in the first step so it it seemed a bit overwhelming okay just throw 10 models at it and try all models with like a bunch of different combinations maybe i would be a little bit more like step by step but it's it, it probably makes sense it, it was just a bit like okay here we do do everything in one step it's, it's a bit scary <laughs> Uh, that, that's a great question. That's a great question. And I have asked that myself as well. So from the information I found, um, I think you did, you said right. So you can just throw the things there and then tune in. So add the things later and see if the uh, model works, uh, achieve your purpose, you can even don't, don't, but if you want to maybe dig a bit more uh, and see uh, if, if there are any either interactions uh, and you want to search for something, it's very important. So it's a key parameter. But as a first step, you, you, you can uh, uh, just uh, like, uh, uh, just as you said, put a, a skeleton, a structure, an empty structure that gives you an idea of what is happening. And then you dig inside adding the things that are available. Or maybe you can make functions uh, yourself and adding things inside, there are many things that can be done. But um, it's important when, when you have understood uh, that you have many models to use, uh, it's nice, this, this chapter, uh, it's very nice because you had the chance to use all the models and then just extrapolate the best one <laughs> without <laughs> I actually really, really liked in this chapter that it it was like didn't really introduce a new thing, but it like put together all the things that we learned in the previous chapter. So it's like the functions that you used were really similar that we learned in the the tuning chapter and grid search and so on, and just like put it together with with the chapter with about the workflows. So it, 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 it was nice. There are many functions that can be used, but as well as uh, summarize, grouping, uh, so like tally, mo tally verbs, uh, verbs and everything, as well as those ones, uh, when you need it, you search for them and you find them. Basically. Okay, the, yes. yeah. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, I say mm, the, the important part to me is understanding, um, know where you want to arrive, where you want to go, have a, a final objective and an answer that you want to, a question that you want to answer. But then you need to um, understand the modeling. Because basically it's a linear model. And then you add modifications. And then there is two, this, this uh, interesting uh, uh, group of mode, which is classification models and uh, regression models. So I think these are, are the very important things then you have function to use. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> yeah, sorry to cut Practice. you off, just uh, I think we are running out of time. So, so thank you very much for the presentation again. Thank uh, you. And actually